Welcome back. Four days away from Election Day now, and more than one million ballots have already been cast in the state of New York. Former President Trump has been focusing on turning New York red, recently holding a rally in New York City at Madison Square Garden and one on Long Island. But the presidential race is not the only one to watch in the state. Republican Mike Sapricone is challenging incumbent Democrat Senator Kirsten Gillibrand's seat. She's been a New York senator since 2009. A new Siena College poll shows Gillibrand leading by more than 20 points. Joining me now is, is the U.S. Senate candidate for New York and former NYPD detective Mike Sapricone. Mike, good to see you. Thank Thank you so much for being here. How are you going to unseat somebody who's been in place since 2009 and she's up 20 points against you? What's your plan? Well, good morning, Maria. We've traveled this entire state, all 62 counties, for the last eight months. I'm feeling terrific. Every place we go, everybody we talk to on both sides of the aisle don't seem to know who she is. And if they do know, she's non responsive to them. And you know, as a detective, I always say if you were to put her in a lineup, you couldn't pick her out. But that's because she's become a Washington politician, not caring about the constituents here in New York who elected her. And, and that's part of the problem. Uh, you know, when we had a debate last week and we kind of held her feet to the fire and we talked about, you know, illegal immigration and cost of living and, and how she's going to handle these things. And she just keeps talking about a lot of stuff she's done that doesn't resonate with the people here in New York. I, I think we're in a great place. But you've got to resonate with people. You've got to be heard. Or do you have enough outlets to actually be heard in terms of your own plans, how you'll be different than uh, what she's put in place in terms of the policy she supported? I believe we do. And, and a lot of it's been one-on-one -on -one talking to the people going through this whole state. Uh, you know, our social media is strong. Uh, we have some commercials coming out. They came out a few days ago. So we're making a point, and we're making a point that it's going to be about common sense, and that's what we lack here in New York State and we lack in this country, and that's what we need. We need to talk about the cost of living and what it costs when you sit down at Thanksgiving in a month or so about what you're paying this year compared to last year or the year before, you know, that big increase. We're talking about illegal immigrants and crime, and those, to me, are the domino effect, Maria. They tie into one and the same. Uh, people expect to be able to feed their families and have a good life. People expect to be safe in their homes and safe when they walk the streets. And, and we have no problem with immigration. But people here, and I speak to more and more people, and we all know, you and I know, we're immigrants, our parents, our grandparents, and it's not right. These, these parents of ours, and relatives of ours, came here legally, came here to work hard and make a better life for themselves. That's not what's happening now. We're bringing people into this country that are criminals, that are here illegally, that are not making a better life for themselves necessarily. They're here to terrorize us, and we see what's going on in this city and this state with crime on the illegal immigrants. And the money we're sending down from upstate New York, close to $5 billion, to, uh, to get debit cards so that these illegal immigrants can have food and have hotels, this is not a humanitarian issue. This has become a security issue at the border. Yeah. And Gillibrand is saying we should uh, reimagine ICE. Uh, we should reimagine what she's doing for the state of New York and what we need in this great state and country. Well, look, now New York City is sending the 4,500 migrants back to Texas and offering free one-way plane or bus tickets to other states like Illinois or Florida or Colorado. Uh, you've got this uh, dangerous uh, gang from Venezuela, the Tren de Aragua, and their uh, youth gang, the uh, Los Diablos, they call them. They've been causing major problems in New York. Now the New York City police have arrested members of this gang a whopping 517 times this year, according to the crime staff. That's reviewed by the New York Post. The New York Post and, the, and, and Fox News media, of course, share common ownership, Mike. Uh, but look, the Post has done a great job reporting on, on this. We have been focused on Trende Aragua now for a couple of years after uh, Paul Morrow told us how dangerous they were a long time ago on this program. And yet we see no commentary whatsoever from uh, Kirsten Gillibrand about Trende Aragua. I mean, what, what do you want to do with this Venezuelan gang that is causing chaos in the city, not to mention other? cities like Aurora, Colorado. Well, that's ridiculous what happened in Aurora. And what we need to do here is we need to crack down right away. These people need to be deported immediately. There's over 20,000 criminals who have come into this country in the last several years that are convicted criminals, murderers, rapists. We're not doing anything about that. We need to start. We need to deport people. But where we need to start is with our criminals. Deport the criminals. They don't have a right to be here, and they're terrorizing our streets, our cities, and our country. And people are afraid. 
People are afraid to go out. And look, these are recidivists also. These are people committing the same crimes over and over and over again and getting out. And you look about, they're recruiting young members like the Little Devils in the uh, Times Square area because they know, because we up the age here in New York State, they know the young people aren't going to be held, or young people aren't going to be accountable, so they can use them as their, uh, as their workers and, and not worry about anything and get done whatever they need to get done. It's despicable that we sit here and let this happen. She said nothing about the criminals in this state, in this country. She said nothing about illegal immigrants. That's not on her agenda. That's not her focus. And it needs to be. And it will be our focus. You know, Cheryl, it's not just the actual murders that we've learned about, like a Lake and Riley, like a, a, a Miss Nungary, a Jocelyn Nungary. It's also the fear that people have today, isn't it, Cheryl? It's changing people's behavior just because they fear a, a different, they have a different fear today that they didn't have four years ago. Because of the crime that has come with, in particular, these Venezuelan migrants and trendy Aragua, which we've seen these gangs here in New York City, as Mike was just saying, but also you're seeing them filter out into other parts of the nation. And that is why immigration has become such a top issue in a national election, Maria, because of the stories that you see, whether it's Aurora, Colorado, or it is Chicago, or it is New York City. And Mike, I'd love to ask you, when you're out and you're meeting with these constituents uh, in this district that you're trying to win over right now, what do they tell you about, about the effects of the migrants in their communities? Because one of the things that New York City Mayor at, uh, Eric Adams has done is when the city said that they were overwhelmed with migrants, which to be clear, I'm a resident and we were, they started sending them out to these other parts of uh, New York State. And that is when the pushback and the fight began between these communities and these districts, New York City and these smaller areas. What are you hearing from them? Well, Cheryl, when you travel upstate, Erie and Niagara counties up in western New York, they're overwhelmed, okay? And Adam said he was going to pay for their for their hotels and for their schooling and everything else, and they're not. The classroom size are doubling and tripling with non-speaking uh, illegal immigrants. And that, look at that, the, the, how it affects our economy upstate. Uh, it takes away from uh, our education. It makes the classrooms bigger. It takes away from our jobs up there. It's a disaster. It's certainly a crisis. And the whole state is feeling this. This is not just a New York City problem. It's a New York State problem throughout the counties that we travel. People are concerned. You know, we talk about the northern border. People are coming yeah. over the northern border. We have the biggest border in the country up in New York State. And people are dying in the St. Lawrence River coming across. People are, are, are terrorizing farmlands, living in farms. Uh, people are completely upset, and rightfully so. And we're just not doing anything about it because yeah. we have no plan to start, so we have no plan to finish this. Yeah, well, you need a plan. That's that's uh, the beginning. Uh, Mike, good to see you. We will be watching the race. Mike uh, Sapricone joining us this morning uh, on his uh, Senate pursuit.